Hey, Ted, your friend Alex is on the phone from Germany. <laughs> What's up, big guy? You want me to find you an anniversary, Countach? Used to be able to buy them for a couple hundred grand. They're like six or seven these days. All right, let me get on it. He wants an anniversary edition Countach in red. He wants low, low miles, and he wants me to find it and make sure it's the right car. So now you get all three things that you love. Someone has to look for the car that you don't have. It's a spaghetti car, which you love, and you need an expert to help you find this car. It ain't what I sell. But what do you think you can get it for? For 500. Finding one is the problem. I'm gonna call Dave in Palm Beach. He probably knows where the best ones are. You know the original history of a Lamborghini, right? No. You don't wanna learn? No. Why not? It's something simple and it's fun. Originally, Lamborghini used to buy them from Ferrari. Originally, I had hair. Does that matter? No, I'll buy a book. I really will. Let me just do my job. All right, Ted, you want to be like that? Just remember, Lamborghini used to modify the Ferraris. Next time, stop by when you can't stay so long. I got a phone in my car and I'm on the run. I know what it takes to be number one. And I'll be riding high when the day is done. I'm just out here having fun. I've been buying, selling, and trading classic cars for 40 years. I work here with my beautiful wife, Robin, and we have a great team. Some people call it work, but for us, it's a whole lot more. I'm Ted Vernon, and this is my place, South Beach Classics. Yeah. I'm heading up to Palm Beach Lamborghini to see my buddy David, and I'm looking for a spaghetti car, meaning something built in Italy. Lamborghini Palm Beach. Look at all these Lamborghinis, my God. If David doesn't know where an anniversary Countach is, no one does. David, how are you, mate? How are you? How was your drive out? Was it good? Good, good, good. Yeah? I need some help. OK. I got a customer in Germany who's a very dear friend of mine. He wants to buy the right anniversary edition Countach. I'm not oh, looking for gosh. anything modern or anything like that? No, no, not at all. Here. He wants that car. It's sold today if I have it. So your guy's a history guy, huh? Do you want to know about the history? No, I'm not interested. I'm interested in making money. Typical, typical. <laughs> All about the deal. I can show you I around. Like, I like that car. Well, let's have a wander over. Let's have a look at that car. This car is just so sexy. A Rancho Atlas. I haven't been to one of the new ones. I like to look at spaghetti cars. I mean, they're pretty. They just ain't my cup of tea. I like Rolls's. I like Bentley's. Those are Ted cars. The car's really nice. It's not my style, but I like it. I wouldn't have my license for four days if I owned this car. I promise you that. <laughs> All right. Well, but let me go make I, some phone calls. Can you? Yeah. Can I've like got a guy out? in the Midwest. Let me call my guy, Brian. You know, I'm not big on experts, but Dave is a friend, a guy I know and trust. Makes it a lot easier when someone else does that legwork and finds a car you want. All right. I've got a guy. He might have something that might fit the bill. It's a 900-mile red anniversary. It says it's in the wrapper. The Bolo Museum, Classic Museum up in Chicago. This guy called Brian. I've done a lot with them over the years. Yeah. I like them. They're going to go on up there in the next few days. Well, I might just come up there. You know, I might have something to show you. And you got anything that'll make it up there? I got something that'll make you up there. Make it back quicker than you'll be back in Miami. Quicker than a phone call. Quicker than a phone call. All right. Thank bro. you. Take care. See you, brother. The only thing I got to do now is go to Chicago, eyeball the car, make sure I get the deal done. This is my kind of town, Chicago is. My kind of razzmatazz and all that jazz. The kind of town that won't let you down. So I hope I can buy some cars while I'm here in the Windy City. Hi, guys. Hi, Tony. I'm Jim. Jim Gollum. Hi, Jim. This is my buddy, Jim Garbo. Jim Garbo. Nice to meet you, Ted. Hi, Jim and Jim. Yeah. There we go. You guys ought to go in the gym business. Yeah. <laughs> so we have an Amphi car, and it's beautiful. This is one of the cars that's on my bucket list to buy. The problem I got is the guy's in love with his car. He's a collector. And it's very hard to buy a car from a guy like that. The Amphicar was uh, built from 61 to 68. I bought the car about uh, five years ago. I bought it off of eBay. It was a barn find, and it had big rusty holes. The engine was froze. I had a professional restorer, restored the car. It took him 18 months. It's pretty much new from front to back. It's got a great paint job, a whole bright new engine. The transmission's all new. I mean, this is one of the nicest ones in the country, if not the nicest one. This is a 64. Back then, a Corvette cost just $200 more. But part of the marketing of the Amphicar was that you're buying a car and a boat. I've seen Amphicars before. I've seen very nice ones, and I've seen dogs. This car is very nice. It's gorgeous. Can I uh... see the engine? Yep. You bet. They decided on a, a Triumph Herald engine, which was 47 horsepower, four cylinder, 1147 cc's. They called it a Model 770. Supposedly went seven miles an hour on the water and 70 on land. 
I think it's more of a Model 550. I don't think it, it really hits those performance. I think that was all marketing hype. It was a neat idea. The problem was it wasn't a very good car and it wasn't a very good boat. It really didn't do either one of the functions very well. All right, Jim and Jim, are you willing to sell it? If the price is right, we, we'd <sighs> highly consider it. My target number is 75. Got a little bit less in it, but I got a lot of busted knuckles and blood, sweat, and tears. I think it's worth that much on the open market if you find the right buyer. If I can buy it, I'll buy it, but it's gotta make sense. Well, I think the car is spectacular, and I'm gonna tell you the number that's in my head. I think I'm being real fair, 40 grand. Oh, Ted, you know, I, I, I respect I, your I, offer, and I think 40 for uh, a typical car you'd buy on, on eBay. Jim, get reasonable and I'll buy your car. Ted, I think 75 is reasonable. You know, there's an emotional attachment that's to it. That's right. That, and, you know, and that's and, not and, my and, fault. And, and it's not your fault, and you and can't get anything for it. it's not my fault. You restored it. Last offer, one time, and I think if you say no to me, I'll be very happy. And if you say yes to me, I'll be very happy. Because I know with this offer, I've tried my best. Okay, that's $50,000, one time, boom. Ted, I just can't do it. I, I, I again, I got, I got that much, if not more, in it, and I, and I, and I, I don't have to sell it. So I still want my ride. Absolutely, we're gonna love to give you a ride in Let's this thing. Let's do this. You want a life preserver? No. I got a special <laughs> one that says Amphicar on it. <laughs> As a kid in Atlantic Beach, New York, I remember seeing these cars cruising behind my house. I've always wanted to go for a ride in the water with one. I hope it floats. Look, ma, I'm riding in an Amphicar. Top of the world, ma. The deal didn't happen, but we had a great day. Ted's a great guy. I think his number was fair for an average car. This is above average. I gave him a ride, and I think he enjoyed that. He's a big kid at heart, and kids enjoy these cars. What happens when it gets stuck out here? Yeah, you got to get out and push. It's a boat. It's a car. I don't know what it is, but it was fun. I think he really should have sold me the car. I tried. I couldn't have done more. I had a blast. It's one thing off my bucket list. I got to ride in the water in an amphicar. car. How cool is that? The Amphicar's uh, mascot is the rubber ducky, and so I always give the kids a little rubber ducky as a memory of their ride in their Amphicar. This is for me? That's for you, absolutely. He really wasn't a very foul guy. He was a very nice guy. I'm on an upswing, I had a great day. I would have liked to buy the car. I want I'm not gonna get, but the weekend's young, and I'm gonna buy cars. I'm here at the Volo Museum, about an hour out of Chicago. I'm trying to buy this Lamborghini because I have it sold. There's a good profit to be made. Hey, Dad, how you Hi, doing? Brian, how you doing, brother? Good doing to see good. you. Yep, you too, you good too. To see you, man. I'm just happy to be here. Oh, me too. You know, we're looking at a $500,000 car, so I'm really happy. You're looking to get a half a million. I'm looking to spend a lot less. We'll see, we'll see about that. We will. <laughs> this is an interesting room. Yeah, this is our uh, Duesenberg room. We got the largest collection of Duesenberg twos in the world. They made 63 of them, and we got 13. Wow. I could stay in this room all day. I just love these automobiles. Here at the Volo Auto Museum, we've got about 400 cars sprawled out over about 30 acres. We have about 300 uh, vintage cars for sale, and we also have a museum. So people can come here and view everything. We got stuff for the kids, stuff for the grandparents. You never know what you're going to see next. You know who this is? Wake up, Maggie, I think I got something That's to right. say to you. This is Rod, Rod Stewart's car. Yes, yes, he had yes. this at his house in uh, Palm Beach. Yeah. This is the one the gardener stole? You know the story. Yes, I do. Ted hasn't been here for years, so I'm you know, pretty excited to show him around. We're always moving forward with expanding, adding new displays, making more space for more cars. You know, you'll see the car from the Dukes of Hazzard generally, right next to a 57 Chevy or a 65 Mustang that's for sale. Terminator 3. One of our many TV and movie cars. The Ecto. Ecto 1. The 66 TV series Batmobile. Bond. James, James Bond. <laughs> I got something here from your neck of the woods. Bikini clad women? Not too far off. Miami Vice. Yep. They really put us on the map for filmmaking and yep. everything else. Yeah, you know, the people that buy these cars are the people that remember them from their childhood when they couldn't afford it. It was a dream. And now those people are older and they're making their dreams come true. Do you recognize this one? Cat in the Hat? That is Cat in the Hat. This thing is a work of art. They spent $1.4 million building this car, and it was on screen for less than 60 seconds. You know, you're in great shape for the shape you're in. <laughs> That's a good good Dr. Seuss line, but wrong wrong show. I do not like green eggs and ham. <laughs> I do not like them, Sam I am. You're still on the wrong show. I thought you said you've seen this movie. We never know what's going to happen. You know, who's going to walk through the door? What's going to show up at our front door? Uh, so every day is exciting. We get to see something new and something fresh. We've 
gonna show you a 1958 Lamborghini. Have you ever seen one before? No, they didn't build Lamborghinis in 1958, <laughs> Einstein. <laughs> yes, they did. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a lesson about Lamborghinis. You know, it's funny, everybody's been trying to tell me all these stories about Lamborghinis, and I've been telling them all to quiet, I don't wanna hear about it. You know, I was telling Ted the uh, history, he was very reluctant. I forced him, he had to hear it, so he knew what he was talking about. What's this, right here? Come on over, take a closer look. <laughs> That's a Lamborghini tractor? This is a Lamborghini tractor. Marcus and everybody else have been trying to tell me all this history and I haven't listened. I know you know your stuff, I'll listen. All right, you know what a lot of people don't realize, Ferruccio Lamborghini came from a farming family. And after the war, he actually started a manufacturing business producing tractors. When his business started doing good, he started making money. So he went out and got himself a Ferrari 250 GT. It was a very good car, but he knew it could be better. This got to a point where Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari, wouldn't even sell him any more cars because he kept screwing with them. That's where the feud started between Ferrari and Lamborghini. He said, you know what? You're not gonna sell me a car, I'll build my own. And he built a better car, and that became the supercar it is today. Wow, I had no idea about the tractors at all. Yeah, a lot of people don't. Now you can actually tell people that you saw a 1958 Lamborghini and they're not gonna believe you and you can correct them now that I gave you your history lesson. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been taught something. Everybody's been trying to tell me the story of Lamborghini. I finally listened to Brian because Brian really knew the story and I learned a lot today. This guy, Scott, saw a pickup truck I had on my website, and he's got a couple of tricked out Harleys, and he said he'd trade me the bikes for the pickup truck. And since I'm in the Chicago area where he's from, I said, let's get together. And I'm gonna look at the bikes and see if we can't make a deal. I looked online, saw that he had a 57 Chevy pickup truck for $8,500. With the way my pricing is on these two bikes, it should be about an even deal or a little more on mine to give to him. We'll go from there. There you go. This is the pink one. The pink bike is a special homemade bike that I put together in honor of my wife's passing. She died from pancreatic cancer, and I finished it before she died. It's been used in parades, fundraisers for breast cancer, but uh, it's time for me to let go, and it's time for the deal to be done. <laughs> the gas tanks are boobs. Yep, I ordered those. It took um, almost <laughs> a year to get. Good when it's nippy weather. Yeah. I like it. What year is this? The uh, motor's a 1999, it's titled as a 2011. Is it a Harley number, H1 HD number? That's no, an important it's thing. A, it's a home built number. It's, it's a Wisconsin title, it's a regular title. I export most of my vehicles. If a bike has a real Harley number, which is a 1 HD number, any country will take it. When it's got a Mickey Mouse homemade or any other number besides 1 HD, it becomes real confusing for the buyers. That is a problem for me. That hurts me, but it is what it is. This is a 1 HD number. Correct, that's a 1982 shovel head. I picked that up uh, two years ago. A friend of mine, her husband died from bone cancer and I was gonna make that into another cancer bike. I just don't have the time and energy to do it. I am decided I'm trying to get out of the motorcycle business. Well, it's a pretty bike. Ted, I was thinking about trading you that and this, even up for the truck. I'm gonna be delivering them down to you. You don't have to pay for any shipping. I'll take the truck and bring it home, oh. straight up. To ship two bikes from Chicago is probably 300 a bike. So he's saving me 600, maybe $700. That's all well and good. But I have a pickup truck. Pickup trucks are gold, they sell well. If I'm gonna take those two bikes, I need some boot. I like to get a couple of grand. I'd probably settle on one, but I'm not doing it straight up. In the market that it is right now, the 82 is probably worth $3,500 to $4,000, and then the pink bike is probably worth anywhere to five to $6,000. That's a pretty good even swap for me and a deal for Ted. If he'll come my way a little bit, it'll be a deal. If he won't come my way, I'm not doing the deal. How I feel the deal is fair is like two grand would work for me. I make some money, I'm good to go. And the reason I won't do it even is because when I sell both of these bikes, they're gonna bring the same amount of money as my truck would bring and I can sell a truck better than a bike, but because you've, you know, you're know, you a good cat, we met, the bikes are everything you said they are, I'll do it for 1,500 bucks. That's as far as I'm going. Uh, I don't know, Ted, that's pretty steep. What about 1,000 and a handshake and we'll call it a day? I'm good, All right. 1,000 bucks. Cool. Deal's done. I think each one of those bikes will do five to 12 grand a piece and uh, I'm gonna have 1,500 in the pair, so I think I'll be okay. I'm looking forward, actually, to going to Florida to, to deliver the bikes. Um, there's friends and family that I like to see on the way down, and I can make a trip out of it. Come on, brother. Deal's done. Sounds good. How about if I buy you lunch? 
at the pub. Sounds good, and I'll buy you a beer. Maybe one more after that, too. Okay, but we're not riding bikes, then? No, no, no. We'll put them on the trailer. It works. Surrounded by spaghetti cars. That's David from Lamborghini Palm Beach. How are you, buddy? <laughs> you doing, doing good? I'm doing good. What, you think you got to hold my hand here? I just want to show you what's going on. I want to show you the new stuff versus the old stuff, you know? So what do you think of this? We've got some German engineering, Italian styling, V12, just like the Countach. Got the doors that go up. We've still got a big wing. Zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. But is it a classic? It's not a classic. It's the latest and greatest. It's a hell of a car. It's a hell of a car. We got carbon fiber, we got 750 horsepower. You know what's amazing to me is that the Countach has gone to the moon in value in, in, in 18 months. Yeah, and, and where's, mean, the, where's this going to be in 18 months? Now, the new Lamborghinis way outperform the older ones. But, you know, we're in the collector car business, and, you know, my heart is in the classics. I had probably four or five posters on my wall myself. Old versus new in Lamborghini. Naturally, your technology's better. The Lamborghinis of today are going to run a lot better and a lot longer. But I deal in old cars. You know, before you go, why yeah. don't you hang out and look at the car and give me your opinion? And Well, I'll help you make a deal with this guy. All right, we'll see you inside. All right. The reason I came up here is to buy this car because I got a bid from a guy that I know is going to buy it for 700 I'll buy it for five or less. That ain't a bad day's pay. We bought it a few years ago, and in the past 18 months, the values on those cars have just skyrocketed. Here's the car. We didn't buy this one to resell. We bought it uh, for display in the museum just because of the, the iconic uh, history behind it, you know, the 1980s. Anniversary. 1980s, this was the car. This was the ultimate. It's only got 900 miles on it. It was a one owner. What got us to like it is, you know, red with the white interior. You know, there's so many other colors out there that just aren't as popular. It's an amazing car. It's a rare car. It's an anniversary edition. It's a 900 mile car. I'm not going to find a better one. My player wants it and I'm going to get it done. I'm not leaving without the car. Ted's got a buyer on this one, so I know I got him. If he wants to put a deal together, he's going to have to pay the price. I wish I had had a dent or a ding I could pick on the car. You're not going to find anything. It was taken care of. You can sell this to your, your German buyer sight unseen. You got nothing to worry about. Brian, it's gorgeous. Let's talk turkey. Well, I know Ted's going to walk in here and you know, try to beat me up on this car, but it's firm price. We don't need to sell it. It's not going down in value. If anything, it's going to continue to go up. So I'm going to have to stick really, really, really firm on this one. I think that you should sell me this car for what it's worth, which is 400 Well, I don't really need to sell it, so it's going to be 500 I actually had an offer of $400,000 already that we turned down. 500 is the magic number on this one. Even the tires, they're, they're $4,000 a piece. These are the original tires. You got offered 400 grand. I have been. I don't think there's a better Lamborghini than this one around. I, I don't think I'm going to get a better car, and I don't want to pay his price, but it's, it's going to be right up there, I think. He knows what he's got. I think 450 is the end of the earth. Really do. Yeah, like I was telling you, it's one of our museum cars. I, I don't even have it for sale. So where's you got yet, Ted? He's at five, I went to four, and I went to 450. To be honest with you, I think the five's a fair number. I thought it might have even been a little bit higher. So I think the car's a fair price. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just call it a day, I'll pay you 475, and we'll call it a day and I'll buy it. You a gambling man? I've been known to gamble. You know that uh, Lamborghini history I gave you earlier? Well, how about we do a race? I'll take the Lamborghini tractor, you on the Ford tractor. I win, it's 500. You win, it's 450. It's a spaghetti tractor. Yep. I'd rather have the Ford dependability. You'll probably blow a tranny. <laughs> Let's do the race. Let's do it. I'm a gambling man. Yeah. Let's do it. Brian has stacked the cards against me, in my opinion. He's given me a Ford tractor. He's got a Lamborghini tractor. I just don't like the sound of this at all. Let's see what we got here. What's going on right here? What does yours have on it? That is pretty funny. <laughs> I gave Ted the Ford, which had the ARP tracks on it, and those are on there for traction, you know, for snow, for mud. So I figured, you know, it'd give him a little extra traction, you know, to get through the race. He didn't give me a tractor. He gave me a tank. All right, Ted, are you ready? 
I think what I'll do is just run into him, and I think that's my only shot to win. He's got to be prepared to hit the dirt. You ready? We all know the Lamborghini is going to win. I offered 450 for the red Lamborghini Countach, and he counted with five, and I said no. So Brian said, you know what? Let's have a race. Let's go for 450 or five race tractors. I'll use a Lamborghini tractor. You can have a Ford tractor. I said, okay. And I got destroyed, and he got me for 50 grand. It would upset me, but I sold the Lamborghini for 700 grand plus expenses. When you buy something for five and sell it for seven, you're doing okay. So I'll be fine. Now you feel that. It was fair. When he has the Lamborghini, he smoked me that way. But I did give you a head start. Uh, he gave, gave me a weak head start. I, I don't know if you gave him one or he took one. Yeah. All right, bottom line is this. I owe you 500. Let's go sit down. I'll pay you. My opinion of spaghetti cars has not changed. I'm not big on them. I'm big on making a profit, and I'm big on selling cars. That Lamborghini is everything what we do, and it's sold. I'm good.